So, oh, um, I am going back to do uh, Advent of Code Day number 16. I skipped it earlier, and it is time to make that right by, uh, by solving the puzzle. So, let's go ahead and pop open the Day 16 description and review where we were, and then go on from there. So the thing with day number 16 was that it was a puzzle where you had to debug um, debug a bunch of binary uh, and parse and parse it out into into packets. And where I suspected um, correctly, as it turns out, uh, that this was going was that you would get like a, a tree of arithmetic operations to perform out of it, but the problem was that I couldn't even get the tree parsed because my brain was not wired correctly at the time. So let's go back and fix that. Um, so what we have is, let me show you what my input looked like. Um, my input looked like this, so just a bunch of hex. And when you fail to parse hex into binary as a programmer, that is a sign that you need to stop and get more rest. <laughs> All right. Um, so where were we? Uh, let's try running this code and see what it does. It's probably going to spit an error. Yeah, okay. So I ran way off the end of the, of the program, um, and basically my parsing code is not really working as well as it should be. So uh, let's go ahead and fix that now. Let's have a look at some of this code and... Um, see what we can what sense we can we can bang into it okay um so what i had here was i successfully i think um got the bit array working for a tiny input so i think if i look at simplest dot input you can see that i literally just put like you know four characters in here, which I think was this one. Um, yeah, so Delta 2 Foxtrot Echo 28 was the simple example. Um, so let's run that. Yep, so we did get the value 2021, and then there was some random junk on the end that we failed to get rid of. Um, the other three unlabeled zero bits at the end are due to the hex representation and should be ignored according to this. So, um, yeah, basically that's where that stands right now, um, is I managed to get the literal parsing working correctly. And um, at the end of any given packet, um, Basically, there, we know that there is one packet in here, right? So therefore, once you finish parsing a packet, you are done, and you can hand off the reader object to someone else. So what I did not do yet was I did not yet establish a data type for a packet. So I'm going to do that now. That way I can say, you know, when you finish parsing the packet, just return. You're done. Like, you don't need to parse anymore. Um, and then there will be subfunctions, of course, for parsing inner packets, but I think that is probably the best way to keep track of where we are. Okay, so we have a packet, which is a struct, and the packet has items in it, which are going to be the version and the type, which are both ints, and then we have the, um, what do we have after that? And then we have a value, which is also an int. But it also could potentially have, in addition to having to having a value, it could also potentially have some number of sub packets. Uh, so it represents an operator that has one or more sub packets, which is going to be. We'll represent this as a as a list of inner packets. Um, hi, Joshua Wise. Um, I am solving day 16 because I skipped it. Um, and yes, I'm sorry about the uh, lack of captions on Twitch. Unfortunately, it would cost me hundreds of dollars uh, to get this real-time captioned uh, by a human being. So I figure that if you want captions for the live stream, you're better off using your own um, 
your own tools on your own smartphone. Uh, but otherwise, if you are willing to wait a day or two, um, then it'll turn up cap fully captioned on my YouTube uh, because I do employ someone uh, at less than hundreds of dollars per hour uh, to caption this stuff. Okay, cool. All right, um, should I make these packet pointers? Yeah, let's make these packet pointers. I just feel that makes life easier. All right, so now... So instead of checking whether position is less than length input, um, what I'm going to do is this. So uh, we're not going to do the handle the version sum here. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to recurse through the uh, through the packet tree um, after we've finished doing the parsing. So this code here, right? And that that code is now going to become something different. So Funk parse. Um, we have a byte bit array. And then we have also a position. So that will parse a packet starting at this position. Um, and this returns a pointer to a packet. So we know here, now we don't need this for loop, which is a nice convenience. Um, and so I'm not going to bother printing the value. Instead, what I need here is we're going to return So in here, return a packet with, we'll have, oh, version sum doesn't matter here. Um, so version is going to be version. Um, value is going to be ampersand value and the type is going to be uh, packet type. Okay, I think that worked. So now let's just check this. So um, outer packet is going to be parse of input comma input comma zero. Okay, so now we just need to write a function to recurse. Um, so uh, p packet for in sum Okay, um, so that returns an int. Um, so sum plus equals p version uh, actually we can just start initializing into that and if p contained Now we have to replace this. This is just instead of um, call this input just for simplicity. That's fine. Oh, and um, the position here of the parse um, does need to be mutable. Um, when we pass it to a child, um, we will have children. Okay, I will. I will think about how to deal with the children case for now, but I think this is fine. Okay, 
Um, uh, do, do, do. I'll just coerce these. And that's missing a return. Yep, that's just going to be return no. Done. Uh, I did not have as much fun on the day that I did it, but I was really tired, whereas I am feeling more fresh because it turns out my medication makes me sleep a lot and I am feeling a lot more awake now that I've slept, um, which is good. Um, yeah, I found day 18 to be uh, the most fun of the of the year so far. Um, but maybe, maybe my opinion will be changed. Who knows? Um, okay, so the here... The version of this guy is six, not five, which is a problem. Okay, um, that's fascinating. Um, also, where is the, where am I print lining? Oh, that, that's just print lining bits of four. Why is this? Where is my a printf being called? Oh, version sum. Oh, I need to actually print the function call itself and not the function. Ah, there we go. Okay, uh, sum is packet version six. Good. Okay, so now we have working parsing. Um, so now we need to deal with children. So if I have children, um, represents an operator that performs some kind of, uh, yeah, okay. So this needs to be a pointer to an int because we have to be able to update it. Um, so that's fine. So, in this case, um, an operator packet can use one or more modes uh, indicated. Uh, so it's got a length type ID after the packet header. So the packet header is, as we discussed, the header is the version and packet type ID. So we've read this many bytes. Yep, that's fine. Okay, so over here, what we have is a length type ID. This by default is going to be an else, so I don't need this else clause because I've used return here. Okay, so length type is going to be input read pause one. So if it's a one, then we're going to be then the next fifteen bits, eleven bits. Okay, so sub packet count is going to be input read pause fifteen. Functional bytes is going to be input read um, pause 11. Or, uh, nope, this one's 11 and this one is 15. Okay. Now, uh, let's make sure we 
do this consistently. Okay, and here the value returned is contained. contained is make is a list of packets okay uh, for <clears throat> so as long as we have not read um, so the end is going to be the current position plus additional bytes Then we're going to recurse parse pause uh, input pause. That should do it. Otherwise, we have here is yeah that should do it okay let's try that and see what happens okay so let's just run it on the simplest input. Um, and this could potentially actually be uint64. Um, so let's handle this like that. That should do the trick. Okay. That looks correct now. Um, and this sum here might be a uint64, so let's handle that. No, the version sum is just a regular int. But so we don't need to handle that uh, that case right now. Okay. Um, but this here, we know is going to always be a regular integer. It can't. It's it's not wide enough to overflow an integer. Okay. So let's give it a longer value with three sub packets and this one will have this one should have a version sum of 31 which indeed has a version sum of 31. Okay, so now let's run on my regular input. Hope I don't crash. If I don't, that's correct. Okay, turns out doing this on more sleep is good. Who knew? Um, some product minimum maximum greater than less than equal to. Okay. Yep, so now that I have working parsing, because I figured out the trick, now I just need to uh, do a evaluate function on it. Okay. Um, so 
so we might actually wind up some product minimum maximum greater than less than equal to okay yeah so this is never going to wind up negative so un64 is correct okay so so we're going to uh, do a switch on p dot type So we've got a number of cases, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 6, 7, default is dot invalid type D. So the case four is very simple. Return p dot value. So our case zero. Um, uh, what did I call the inner types? Um, in the version sum, I just called them inner. That's fine. Sum. Okay. Cool. Uh, this one is a product packet. Oh, I don't know why I got so stuck last time. Um, okay. Uh, this one is minimum. The minimum of the values of their sub packets. Okay. Um, So this one we can just say um, so let's get map in here uh, and let's pull up the Golang math type max u int sixty four. don't want to evaluate this multiple times. So let's do it this way. Yeah, if I'm val is that. less than min, then min equals val. Return min. Okay. So now we are going to do the same thing except for max, I think. value is greater than max, max is value, return max. Four we dealt with, okay. Um, five is just, um, these packets always have exactly two sub packets, so this is safe to do. Um, do I want a backseat bug catch? Um, I trust I will probably be able to find it, but if you want to give me a hint as to where it might be, I'm happy to happy to consider that. Um, if it's just something that the compiler would catch, it's not a big deal. Also, hi, Narf. Um, okay, where was I? Um, case five, uh, product. Okay, you say product. there's a problem with product. Um, oh, yeah, you're right. Thank you.
Yeah, that was a cryptic enough pointer. Um, that was good enough. Um, okay. So, if p inner p contained zero evaluate is greater than p contained one evaluate return unit 64 one otherwise return zero all right and we'll do this one too which is just a less than and finally this one is an equal okay And I need to actually run that lovely code that I just wrote. Um, all right, let's try that and see what happens. That's correct. I'm done. Okay. Bada boom, bada bing. All right, great. Uh, so having done that, uh, why don't we go ahead and do the bonus item then, which is I really wanted to go and add some tracing to my day uh, to my day 18 to show where it's spending some time. Uh, but before we do that, let's go ahead and uh, get this code committed. All right. Um, uh, stage, let's have a look at this. Um, Let's just look through this to make sure that it all makes sense to me. Um, yeah, this this code here really doesn't benefit from having distributed tracing, so I will take out the distributed tracing from it. Um, whereas the next day, I know I want to do some tracing, so I will do that. All right. Um, we will go ahead and zap this, and we'll zap context as well. Okay, let's just read through all this code, make sure that it makes good sense to me. Uh, yep. That all looks fine. Yep, that seems to, to be entirely self-explanatory. Okay, let's just run it one more time, make sure I didn't introduce any bugs which I, oops, day 16, which I did not. That is still the correct answer. Wonderful. All right, this is now getting pushed to GitHub, and you can see it at github.com slash Liz the Gray slash advent of code um, under the day number. So that will be day number 16, like this. And now let's go ahead and add some tracing to my day number 18. Um, and I should have, if I pop open my day 18, let's go ahead and, and comment this now. And let's go ahead and stand up the tracers. So what we're going to have is we're going to have a parse. So let's go ahead and put context in here. Um, so we'll do this. have over here. Let's go ahead and get a uh, so let's call this a, a parse and that should do the trick and let's go ahead and also put in 
where we are um, at the at the start. Uh, where did I put set attribute here? It's going to be set attributes um, attribute string. So something like this. Like right now. Right. So like this. And input, and we'll just go ahead and feed this directly. We'll feed it the string. And we'll also put in the depth here. Okay. And I need to defer span end. Okay. So now that we've done that, um, let's go ahead and in my main function, Let's put the um, so in here we've got a background context. Um, so I'm going to in this background context. Um, this is uh, parse one line. And we'll defer. And after each of these, uh, we we call span end. Um, let's see. So now we're going to have a new process here um, that's going to operate inside of the inside inside of the sum function. Um, so every time I'm called upon to do a sum. So let's go ahead and um, delete homework, and then we'll pass in context here. Right. So we'll add the context here, and also we will add in our context here. And I think He's that'll do it. very easily thanking me. The rats are shooting me. Okay, actually, we'll, we'll call this one part A, and then we'll end oh. the span. And then we will instantiate a new span here. This is part B. And we'll end the span after having done this. Okay. So now I just need to so work this into my sum function. Very zesty. Um, so we'll go ahead and supply a. Now I'm half structured. Uh, how shall I do this? No shape of that fly catcher anymore. Okay. So now let's do inside of the sum function. Where is the sum function I'm happening? Bit, okay. So, so the sum zero. function oh, um, winds up. This setting? construction is fairly straightforward, so I'm not going to bother tracing it. But what I am interested in is this. Um, the reduce function is is what I really want to have some tracing in. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to have reduce. And what I'm interested in finding out is um, for the reduce function, I would like to track the number of times that each action is performed, because that seems like a useful thing to know about, is how complex is my, is my reduce that's going on under the hood. Um, so inside of my reduce function, what I want to do is I want to, oh, uh, this is a integer. Or I think this is just int. Yeah, this is just int. All right, so over here, 
what I want to do to improve the understandability of my code is this reduce function needs to take a context and we will inside of here uh, explodes explode count and we'll set attribute for splits and that'll give me some visibility into what's happening um, so explode count plus plus and split count plus plus Explode count split count it. All right, so now we can go ahead and run this. So we'll run day 18 on my real input and get some traces into Honeycomb. Okay. Um, Oh, and we always need to pass the context object, which is correct. Okay, and on line 329, I have an error, which is... Okay. Okay. So now I've run this. Let's go ahead and go to ui.honeycomb.io and have a look at some of the traces that we generated this way. So I just need to put in my two-factor code, like so. And I should have some recent traces. So let's look at my uh, part A and see. Uh, take away the service name, because the service name is always the same. So inside of my part A, I'm calling a whole bunch of reduces, which makes sense because this input has um, this input has a hundred lines, so I should expect a hundred children. And in fact, if I search, yep, you'll find that I have ninety-nine children. So that's all going according to plan. So inside of reduce, what I'm curious about is how many splits and how many explodes happened. So. Let's go ahead and explore that question. Um, now that I know that you know it's doing this in sequence, um, it's interesting is that it right like each and indiv each individual evaluation is actually pretty fast, at least in part A. The only reason that it's really particularly slow is that um, it is is that some of these are taking 130 milliseconds rather than uh, you know 19 microseconds, right? Like this one had to do 185 splits and 194 explodes, right? Some it's just a tipping point where some of these are resulting in uh, in in larger and larger explosions. This does make me wonder, though, although it's not commutative, I am wondering how associative this is. Whether I could evaluate the latter part of the expression first and parallelize this so that it takes, you know, um, less time. But, you know, overall part A took only like seven milliseconds. I'm not super worried about it, but I think part B is what's taking especially long here. So let's have a look here and see how long my part B took. Um, actually, wait, did I actually do this correctly in terms of spans? This one was part B. Okay, so I should have a span I should have a recent trace for part B. Let's have a look. Um, parent ID does not exist. And, yep, that's correct. Trace parent ID does not exist. Name equals part B. Hmm. I never sent a trace span from my part B. I wonder why that is. I wonder what's, what's happening. Um... Let's have a look at just all of my trace data for the past 30 minutes. Um, and looks, let's look here. So I've got CTX span is trace start um, and background, span end. Yeah, that should in theory send because span end gets called and then 
and then at the end of this, um, yeah, that's really interesting. Okay, let's enhance, as they say, and enhance, and have a look at this here. There are indeed 512 trace spans here, so let's just click here and get one of them. Um, ah, okay, this one's interesting. So I am in fact missing a bunch of these spans. Also, why am I calling parse inside of parse? That's fascinating. So this gives me some insight as to what's happening in, inside here. So let's collapse all at this depth. So what's happening here? That is very mind-boggling. So I guess it makes sense that in the previous one I was just doing 99 editions, whereas here I'm doing 100 times 100 editions. So of course it's just going to take a while. Um, so that's kind of my first takeaway. But my second takeaway is that, yeah, for some reason my part B span is not sending. Um, I wonder whether I'm just going to need to, I would hope that I don't need to sleep afterwards. Um, trace provider shut down, honey shut down, those should be called in opposite orders. That should be fine. Um, oh, and in fact, yeah. Um, I'm not sure what's happening here that's ca that's causing this to to happen like this. Um, so I'm not modifying the context that's being passed here. Okay. Well, let's proceed onwards and see. Do I see evidence of any uh, inside of this trace? Do I have evidence for the for the uh, for the sum function for the explode function Unable being called. Okay, I do have 223 explodes that are happening here. Um, oh, and that's happening inside of these reduces. Okay, that's that's kind of cool to see. Um, oh, right. So what if I encased this inside of here? I think I need to. So the inner span here. This inner span here. Let's make a child of the outer span. Dude, I almost killed a mega with the Merlin at one point. It was a rolling mega so... attack on a gate. He was just like trying to do me. Yeah, that seems fine. And we don't need this inner span. I just need to override this. Yeah, that seems fine now. So this one is a sub problem. Okay, let's try that. Thank you for the sub, Core Gamer. I appreciate that. I appreciate it a lot. Okay, so let's look at, again, the test 10 minutes, okay, um, and let's see what data got sent. Um, so now in here, I should be able to zoom in, and I should be able to zoom in here, and I should be able to look at this trace, which has, do I have any spans in here that are called, um, that are called sub problem? Very annoying. Um, there are no spans called sub problem, which is interesting. Actually, Name equals dynamic. sub problem. If I can fight just the light oh, because I never ended you know, this span, field. right? Sometimes it's like locked so I do need to close this span. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think that should do it now. So let's try again. The try. I'm going back to the, uh, um, the parallax. Like to to okay, so that still is yielding the correct result, um, and it does delay to send all the spans before we finish, I think. 
Um, so now let's look at the past 10 minutes. Um, yep, okay, so I do have spans called subproblem now, which is good. Okay, yeah, so I am, for each subproblem, I'm running a bunch of parses, all of which have inner children as I parse the input. That looks correct. And then finally, I run the reduce span on each. Cool. So now we can ask the question, uh, for this trace ID, how many times am I calling? Um, so let's go ahead and uh, show only where field is this value, right? So now I've got this trace ID. So what I'm curious is, what is the sum of splits and the sum of reduces, uh, or the sum of explodes? How many times am I doing this? So I can remove the constraint that it's sub-problem. Oof, that's fun. So I am calling split 1,500 times, and I'm calling explode uh, 2,000 times. That's really exciting. Um, it's It it makes me happy to see that result. That's kind of cool. Um, OK, cool. So now the other question that I have here is, why do I have a broken trace? Like, what's going on here that I'm not actually seeing? Like, I am seeing results from subproblem, um, but I'm not seeing everything else return after that. I bet that it's just that I need to sleep afterwards before I, uh, before I do this. Um, so let's go ahead and defer. Um, time sleep. So, yep. So I need to eight. Let's sleep for a second first to give everything time to go through. Um, so let's import time, and then we should have complete traces. All right. So we'll run this and see what happens. So now if I look at the most recent 10 minutes and I look for complete traces, parent ID does not exist, group by name. What I should see is, let's have a look. I've got parse one line, I've got part A, but I'm still for some reason not sending off my part B span. Why would my part B span not go off? So I'm getting the spans for subproblem now. Um, calling span dot end. What happens if I do it this way? Nope, still getting parse one line, still getting part A. Um, I'm not finding parse one line to be squirrely useful, um, but that's okay. So my part B is creating a new, let's try doing this just to see what happens here. Um, it? Nope. Okay. Maybe I need to sleep longer in a second. This is the annoying thing about running uh, tracing when you're not running a service is that doing it inside of the CLI can be kind of painful. Oh, I see the problem. The problem is here. I need to give it time after I call the after I call call the uh, trace provider shutdown before I call the uh, the service shutdown. Nope, still not correct. Hmm, I might need to debug this at work on Monday. Um, this is clearly just a problem with batched spans not getting fully sent. 
Okay, cool. Well, you know, there you have it. At least I have, you know, I've I've got the count of the count of number of subproblems, the number of parses, the number of, uh, of of reduces, and within that, the number of explodes and splits. So that's what I had to show you all was uh, how to add tracing uh, to an advent of code problem. Um, Go ahead and show you what the diff looks like. So I literally added like you know a couple more imports. I passed. I plumbed through the context object, and um, and yeah, that's basically all you really need to do in order to in order to add tracing um, and get better insight into where your application is spending its time. Add tracing to day eighteen. All right, so that's now pushed up to GitHub, and I will see folks in probably, what, three hours for uh, for day number 19? That sounds right. Day number 19 is is what's coming up uh, is what's coming up tonight. Cool, and uh, with that, I'm going to go ahead and end the stream. Uh, see you all in a little bit. Cheers.